So last summer, I had a dream of creating a cross-country race bike, something that was laterally stiff, nimble, and also fast. Something that I could take out to some of my local trails and set some personal records with. A few months later after I came up with this, I ran across a bike called the Polygon Syncline C3. This is a fully carbon frame bike that sells for around $1,800. I couldn't believe that I found a full carbon XC bike for under $2,000. And not to mention, the components that came on this made this bike look even more promising. So I have teamed up with Bikes Online to give this bike a full solid review. Over the next six months, I'm gonna be riding this bike on several adventures, and I'm also gonna be swapping out some of its components along the way. I wanna see if I can make this bike my dream XC race bike. So with that said, let's go ahead and let's get this bike out of the box and see if it lives up to my expectations. Now one thing that you will notice whenever you purchase a bike from Bikes Online is the build up process is super easy. The only things that you have to do whenever you get this bike is pull it out of the box, take off all the packaging, install the handlebars and the front wheel. And they make it so easy that they supply the tools to do all this in the box. Online, they claim that this Polygon Syncline C3 weighs only 27 pounds, which would be a great starting point for an XC bike. However, I believe that's only on the small frame. We're gonna have to weigh this to see how much this large frame XC bike actually weighs. Now, I did put on some Crank Brother candy pedals. Those should weigh less than the stock pedals, but I'm not sure if the original 27 pound weight that they have listed online included pedals or not. Most bike manufacturers don't include pedals whenever they're weighing the bike. But for my weigh-in, I'm gonna go ahead and include the pedals in the weight because I wanna get a total weight of this bike from the start. Wow, I was a little shocked to see 30.63 pounds on the scale. That's 3.63 pounds heavier than the claimed weight of 27 pounds. It looks like I've got my work cut out for me to get it down to that 27 pound range. Now that we've got the bike built up and we know how much the official weight is, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the components. One of the first things I noticed was it comes with some Shimano MT201 brakes. Now the bars that come on this are XC style. They're gonna be a little bit more narrow at 740 millimeters. Now this does come with a RockShox Recon. It's 120 millimeters. This does come with boost spacing and a through axle, which is definitely something nice to see on this bike. Now, whenever we get to the rims, we do see that they are Entity branded and they are tubeless ready. Now, one thing that surprised me about these rims is that it's a 30 millimeter internal width rim. That's a pretty wide rim for an XC bike. Even though we got some wide rims, we did get some XC style tires with the WTB Trail Boss at 2.25 inches wide. Now, unfortunately with the 2022 model, Polygon did not opt for an internal dropper post routing. This internal routing here is specifically for a front derailleur. Now back up front, we do see that it comes with a 60 millimeter Entity branded stem. So far, the saddle looks pretty good. It is an Entity branded saddle and they call it the Void. We'll just have to see if this thing is comfortable in the long run. This does come with a 27.2 millimeter seat post. Now looking at the drivetrain, this is a full 12 speed Shimano Dior setup. And that comes with a Dior clutch derailleur. And also up top, it'll come with a Dior 12 speed shifter. I absolutely love the Dior line, so I was really stoked to see that this came with a full group set. Now, something you don't see a lot in mountain biking anymore are two water bottle spots. Now, looking at the back of the bike, this does come with boost spacing. So you're gonna get that 12 by 148 boost spacing with a through axle. Then it's gonna come with a smaller 160 millimeter brake rotor on the back, which again, fits that XC style. 
Then if we look up front, it's gonna come with a 180 millimeter rotor, which is more standard to what I see on down country and trail bikes. Now, if you look at this bike and where the cabling goes in and where the cabling comes out, it's super clean. They basically tried to hide the cable for absolutely as long as they possibly could throughout the frame. Now let's go ahead and take a second to really enjoy what a full carbon frame XC bike looks like. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the geometry. Of course, this is a size large and it is the 29 inch version. This is gonna be ideal for somebody who is between 5'9 and 6'1. The stack on this is gonna be 651 millimeters. The reach is gonna be 450 millimeters. The head tube angle is gonna be 67 degrees, so quite a bit steeper than what my Marin Rift Zone was, which puts this into that XC category. The head tube length is gonna be 120 millimeters. The seat tube angle is 73 degrees. Now the effective seat tube angle is actually gonna come in at 75 degrees. The seat tube length is 460 millimeters. The effective top tube is gonna be 621 millimeters. The bottom bracket height comes in at 307 millimeters. The bottom bracket offset is 65 millimeters. Now the wheelbase comes in at a short 1,176 millimeters. This thing is quite a bit shorter than both the Marin and the Giordano. So this should be a very snappy, fun bike to play around on. The standover height comes in right around 763 millimeters. And then the crank length on the size large is gonna be 175 millimeters. Now that we've dived into all the details and we've had a good look at this bike, there's only one last thing to do and that's to get out on my local trail and see if this is the XC race machine that I've been looking for. Now with this XC style bike, I found that I really had to make sure everything was dialed in perfectly. I had to really focus on the seat post height and the position of the seat. So not only that, I lowered down the stem by about 15 to 20 millimeters to give it a more aggressive feel. I also turned the bars in a little bit more to give me a little bit of back sweep. But after making all these changes, the bike started to feel more responsive and a lot more nimble. Now this carbon is very stiff and that translates to a good thing and a bad thing. The good thing is every pedal stroke, you get instant power to the back wheel. However, with that stiffer frame, it does make it a little bit more jarring. So if you go out on this bike and you're expecting a supple ride, you might wanna think again. Now Polygon did a really good job of honing in on the task that I think that they set out to do. And that was to make an affordable XC race bike. Now over the next six months, I plan on riding this bike quite a bit. And I also wanna do some unique updates and upgrades to this bike to see if I can make it actually my XC race dream. So if you guys are interested in this Polygon Sync line or any of the other bikes that are on Bikes Online, I would really appreciate it if you used my links below. And I do wanna thank my Drop-In Crew Pro members and the newest member, John Woosley. Thanks, John, for becoming a member and thank you for everybody else who is already a member. Your contributions definitely are helping out this channel 
go to the next level. And a big thanks to Bikes Online for sending me this bike to review. Now the search is on for the next upgrades and components.